Mm. So we showed, I think the first thing we showed was that if the if we have a connected domain and the derivative is a, a function which is analytic on the domain, the function is a constant provided either of the two cases and either of the two cases. One is the vanishing of the derivative identically and the second one is vanishing of all derivatives at some point of the domain, right? So this is sometimes called the principle of analytic continuation. The result that the function is a constant if the derivatives are all zero at some point, okay, uh, this is uh, called the principle of analytic continuation sometimes for reasons that uh, I will not go into now. There is something called analytic continuation. Uh, which um, I don't think we will be able to go into. Um, and then we looked at the zeros of an analytic function and observed that the derivative, I mean the zeros are uh, isolated. The set of zeros doesn't have any limit point in the domain. All the while you assume that the domain is connected, okay, generally. Uh, as a consequence of this, we have the, the identity theorem, which says that if an analytic function uh, vanishes on a set with a limit point in the domain, then the function must be zero. Or uh, stated another way, if two analytic functions agree on a set with a limit point, then they must be identical. So this is a very strong result, right, for analytic functions, unlike smooth real functions. Um, and then uh, what the maximum modulus principle what we proved and uh, using the maximum modulus principle we also uh, I think proved the Schwarz lemma. Right? Is that all that we did yesterday? Okay, so to start with, uh, did any of you notice that in the proof of Schwarz lemma that we wrote down, there was a cheating? Right? This was Schwarz lemma. Hmm. Of course, there is something more about the derivative and uh, conditional equality and so on. So, but this is the basic thing. So, how did we prove it? So, we define G of Z. and uh, said we applied the maximum modulus principle for this. How did we do it? J is analytic <coughs> and on the boundary 
it is less than or equal to 1 and therefore it is less than or equal to 1 in the interior also. What was f? f is an analytic function on the open unit disk. So to start with f is defined only on the open unit disk and not on the boundary, right? Whereas, what did we do? We said on the boundary mod g is less than or equal to 1 because mod fz is less than or equal to 1 and mod z in the denominator is 1. So, how do you get rid of this? Simple, you look at a smaller closed disk and apply the maximum modulus principle. Hmm. Take are to be less than 1 and on mod z less than or equal to r apply maximum modulus theta. What do we get? On the boundary now on mod z equal to r, f is defined, right, because we are inside the disk D. So, on mod z is r now, right, f z over z, so mod, so which gives you, therefore, mod j z is less than or equal to r, uh, 1 over r for all points in the interior also. by the maximum modulus principle, right? Apply it to G. And therefore, mod f z is less than or equal to mod z over r. But r is arbitrary, anything less than 1, right? So, you can let r return to 1 so everything is fine now, right? For So, if you like you take r to be 1 minus epsilon, right? So, epsilon is arbitrarily small. So, this is going to be true for given any z in the open disk, the distance is, is going to be something less than 1. So, you can take any point z here, you can always find a disk which contains z and therefore, so since 
r less than 1 is arbitrary, follows. that by letting r to tend to 1. So the rest of the argument is essentially the same as before. Of course, the obvious question once you have this lemma is what happens when you drop that condition that f of 0 is 0. Okay? Uh, we will come to that in a moment, a little later. But uh, in the meanwhile, uh, given an application of Schwarz lemma, to determine all the automorphisms of the unit disk. What do you mean by automorphism here? analytic diffeomorphisms. It is a, a bijective analytic map from D to D so that the inverse map is also analytic, analytic automorphisms. First of all, there is a simple class of uh, Mobius transformations which are automorphisms of D. Uh, look at that minus A over 1 minus A bar Z mod a less than 1, this is going to be analytic in D because the denominator vanishes only at 1 over a bar which lies outside the unit disk because of this assumption. Okay. So, phi a is analytic Does it map D to D? In fact, of course, it is analytic everywhere except at 1 over mod 1 over A bar, right? So, in particular in the unit disk. So, does it map the unit disk to the unit disk? What happens on the unit circle? On the unit circle, although it is defined actually, right? And mod z is equal to 1. What can I say about phi of a z? That z bar is 1, that z bar is mod z square. So, when mod z is 1, what do you get? Is 1. Right? This and this have the same modulus. Mod z is same as mod z bar, right? So, phi a 
maps and therefore if i am must map the interior of the unit disk to the interior of the unit disk why maximum modulus zero so on the boundary it is one modulus is one so in the interior it has to be modulus has to be less than one So if I a maps d to d is analytic, but is it an automorphism? Is the inverse? Is it bijective? What about the inverse? We can straight away check that mod a is less than 1, modulus of minus a is also less than 1. So you look at phi of minus a, which means uh, z plus a over 1 plus a bar z, right? That is the inverse of phi a actually. So this you can just write down and check, okay? That means evaluated at any z, it's just z, okay? And the other way also. Therefore, phi a has an inverse, which is phi of minus a. Of course, we already know that phi of minus a is analytic. Right, this phi a is analytic for any a inside the unit disk. So also for minus a. So this shows that phi a is an automorphism. This D is, is a group, of course, under composition. Take any real number alpha and Just multiply by e power i alpha here. Okay, so the constant of modulus one. So obviously, these are also automorphisms of d, right? Just multiplying by a fixed constant of modulus one. What we want to say is that these are all the automorphisms of D. That is, any automorphism of D is of the form phi A alpha for some A modulus A less than 1 and some real alpha. Every automorphism of D is of this form.
So start with an automorphism of D, then we want to show that So in particular, F is analytic from D to D. Look at the image of zero under this automorphism. It may be zero, it may not be zero. Call it something. And then of course, mod A is less than one. We want to use Schwarz lemma now, but Schwarz lemma it cannot apply to f directly because we need the condition f of zero is zero. Here we don't know what f of zero is. Maybe zero, may not be zero. So you have to get starting with f. You have to get something which maps zero to zero, right? So define look at what this phi a does here. What does phi a do? It maps a to zero. Right? So your f here maps zero to a and you have something there which maps a to zero. So if you take the composition, that's going to map 0 to 0, analytic on D, right? So you can invoke Schwarz lemma. So take the composition of, let's call it G. Check whether the, the order is right. We want 0 to go to 0. So, what is g of 0? Uh, it is phi a of f0. f0 is a. phi of a is 0. So, things are fine, right? Then, mod gz is less than or equal to mod z, right? Schwarz lemma applied to g. What more can you say about G from Schwarz lemma? What about G inverse? G is an automorphism, right? F is an automorphism, phi A is an automorphism, so G is an automorphism. So the inverse also maps D to D analytically. What is G inverse of zero? Zero, right? So you can apply same argument with G inverse in place of G. Okay. So since G inverse is also 
analytic and g inverse 0 is 0. We can also apply Schwarz lemma to g inverse. So the two together together give you what? If you write W equal to G of Z, then G inverse W is Z. Okay. So what does this give you? G inverse Z is so okay. Write W here instead of Z. So what do you get therefore? So maybe you can write W here and W here so that there won't be any confusion of notation. So this is Z and that is G of Z. For all Z. We already had the reverse inequality. So So we conclude that mod z z equal to mod z. Now what equality holds in the Schwarz inequality, the Schwarz lemma, right? So, what is the conclusion therefore? Equality holds for some non-zero z in Schwarz lemma, then the function must be some e power a alpha z, right? So, condition for equality in Schwarz lemma implies Gz is a rotation. Or some real alpha. Phi A, are we getting what we want or is there is a change that we have to do? Let's see. So, what does this give you? Phi A composed with F is just multiplication by e power A alpha. So, what is F? Do we get it all right? Or? Probably we should take F inverse there. Let's see. Yeah, I think uh, 
to get it in the in this form that we had written uh -huh. yeah probably we have to take f inverse here see just write out and see you don't get this form right so this is this is what we want to get e power i alpha into that minus a on minus a bar z this is what we want to get f equal to right but then it's the i think it's the other way now the composition is phi of a of f z is for so let's see whether it's all right as it is or so you will get phi a inverse of this so we want to get z not phi a inverse of uh, this but phi a inverse of z right so i think we will have to take f inverse there if we take f inverse here um then what happens if you take right only then you will get zero to zero uh, and then see do you see what the point is as it is we are getting the way we wrote things down we are going to get what this is phi of a inverse of course instead of a you will get minus a that's fine but this factor will come in the, the mobius transformation that's not we want of course it's all the same but uh what of e power a alpha z right Or phi a phi of minus a of e power a alpha z. Whereas what we want is e power a alpha out outside, right? <clears throat> so we have to tweak things a little to get the correct form that we had written down earlier. there is nothing wrong with this you can also describe automorphisms of d of this form so what do you want to get actually f is equal to um e power i alpha phi minus a this is what we have to get we are getting the the composition other way so what is the change that you have to make so if you want to get end up this way so let us just uh, to think in terms of operators suppose this this is rotation by alpha okay so what we want is to get f this composed with rotation through alpha so what we get here is so we are getting the the other way so replace uh, f by f so the, if f is this f inverse is going to be phi of a r minus alpha ha r alpha inverse is r minus alpha so this is the way we have written down things down there right no no wait, wait wait what is this this is yeah this this is what we have what you want is this so apply phi a and then multiply by this okay right this is what uh, so if f inverse is so if you replace f by f inverse i think things are all right right if you have f inverse here instead of f you will have f inverse is this 
so f will be inverse of this so r of minus alpha alpha or minus alpha doesn't matter times phi of a yeah so i think that will be all right no so keep this as it is don't change that hmm mm, yeah okay yeah otherwise we want zero to zero right so this is fine so phi of a into f inverse is this so that is f inverse e equal to phi of minus a or phi a inverse if you want doesn't matter or alpha where alpha or alpha is rotation by alpha so f is equal to so rotation through alpha the inverse is rotation through minus alpha right so instead of alpha we are getting minus alpha this anyway that that is not a serious thing and it doesn't matter hmm. whether you write this way or that way so the automorphisms of the unit disk are just the the mobius transformations of the form phi a multiplied by uh, uh, something of modulus 1 right because if you remember i had mentioned sometime earlier that the automorphism group of uh, the unit disk is the group su11 so you can see that su11 is same as this group group of all maps of this form of course in general the task of given any domain connected domain the task of uh, finding determining the automorphism group of the domain is not an easy task right for a unit disk uh, it's uh, almost an easy consequence of the maxim modulus theorem and the schwarz lemma the once you have it for the unit disk you will have it for the upper half plane because the upper half plane and the unit disk are isomorphic analytically isomorphic via the kelly transform as i mentioned the other day but in general so even if you take a take an annulus for example finding all the automorphism is not a trivial task okay so now let's we can make a come back to schwarz lemma and see what happens if you don't assume f0 is 0 so there is a more general lemma which drops that condition which is called the schwarz pick lemma f from d to d analytic then Which way you want, right? It doesn't matter. Let's write all f to the one side and all the other things to the other side.
for all the end zeta. If you take zeta equal to 0 and assume that f of 0 is 0, then what are you getting? So, this is f of z, right? This is 0, so this is 1. So, on the left hand side, you get just f mod f z. On the right side, you are going to get just mod z. So, when you take uh, zeta equal to 0 and assume that f of 0 is 0, you get back the Schwarz lemma. By the way, the looking at those phi a's that we looked at, you see that the, the, the automorphism group acts transitively on the disk. Which means what? Given any two points in the disk, you can find an automorphism which takes this point to this point. Right? Given Z1 and Z2 in the unit disk, there is an automorphism which takes Z1 to Z2. Why? These phi A's are automorphisms which take any point to 0. Any A to 0. Right? So, for any point in the unit disk, there is an automorphism which takes that to 0. So, go this way. If you have two points, there is something which takes this to 0 and there is something which takes this to 0. The inverse of this will take 0 to the other one. So, go this way, you, take, you get something which takes this to this. Right? <laughs> so, you should head out and see with all this dance, you know, is not a proof. So, you should actually write it down and see. So, if A and B are two distinct points, uh, not necessarily distinct, of course, the same with the identity map is there. Okay, so two, uh, two points on the unit disk. So, you take phi A and phi B. Phi A of 0, A is uh, 0. Phi minus B of 0 uh, of uh, 0 is B. So, when you compose, you get something, it takes A to B, that's all. So, automorphism group acts transitively on D. Like, so, it much more than transitive action, but we will not worry about it. Okay, so, you can note that anyway, at least, the statement, automorphism group acts transitively. Now, all that you have to do to get this is to apply the Schwarz lemma for a suitable function, that's all. So, I am not going, going to give you the detail, but I will check, I will give you the statement, you check that statement, okay. So you have to check whether it is correct or not. So what you have to check is whether this maps 0 to 0. Okay. Um, what does phi zeta do? Phi zeta takes zeta to 0. Okay. No, 
No, you want to start with zero, right? We want to see what the image of zero is. The image of zero under phi zeta um, minus minus zeta, right? Phi of a, z minus a by something. So if z is zero, it's minus a and uh, minus zeta here. Or oh, maybe you should take minus zeta here. minus zeta take so this zero goes to zeta right and uh, so f f zeta and f zeta goes to zero in this right? i think this is fine <clears throat> just check that this g of zero is zero with this and then apply Schwarz time. And then of course you have to transpose some things to this side and so on. So you have to do the computation there. Of course as I said earlier there is a, a vast generalization of these things to what is called the, the Alpha's Schwarz lemma. Contains all this, uh, but we will not discuss that. Uh, geometric lemma of Alpha's.